Coming up on ATV News. The first code blue that came out was a warning. Now USU police are looking for your help to catch a criminal. Logan High School has a new program. We'll show you how students are learning without a teacher. It was a rough week for USU athletics, but we'll show you one athlete that was named one of the best in their conference. All that and more, this is ATV News. at all that's terrifying he called it a joke but that joke has one Logan neighborhood on edge welcome to APTV news I'm Taylor Emerson and I'm Sarah Murphy according to police the incident happened last night in this Logan home officers say a young woman was in her room studying on her bed when an unidentified man entered her home came into her room put a gun to her head and forced her into a corner he then told her he was drunk and said it was all a joke he left and the young woman called the police, and they say they don't take pranks like this lightly. You know, certainly it's Halloween, um, but if that was a prank, then like, like I said before, that's not funny. It is. And if you have any information on the attack, please contact the Logan Police Department. Salt Lake Police say Austin Boutain was taken into custody at 2.45 p.m. yesterday and confessed early this morning to the murder of University of Utah student Shun Wei Guo Monday night. Guo was shot just outside of campus and students were told to stay inside. All of Tuesday's classes were canceled. USU police are asking students for help in gathering information about a sexual assault on campus this past weekend. A code blue alert went out to USU students Saturday morning after USU police received a report of a sexual assault occurring Friday night between 8.15 and 9 p.m. near the bottom of Old Main Hill. An update was then set out Monday morning asking students for any information they may have regarding the two males involved as well as a small gray four-door vehicle that was heard honking its horn around the time of the assault. Some students on campus say they are glad that the school is providing them with information through code blue. I just liked knowing that um, the campus is being notified of these things. Um, I like that someone reported the incident um, and that people are trying to make sure that we can prevent these things from happening. And if you have any information regarding the reported sexual assault, USU police are asking you to please report it. Wasatch County officials have lifted evacuation orders on some Wasatch County residents who were forced to leave their homes. Last week, three grass fires scorched the hillside east of Strawberry Reservoir, forcing hunters and cabin owners out of the area. The fire made it all the way to State Highway 40, but favorable wind conditions and Wasatch County fire crews stopped it from jumping the road. We do not know what started the fires yet. We will post more information as it comes out on our Facebook page. If you haven't voted yet for the Logan City elections, you're not alone. I'll show you why some haven't voted and how the city is trying to change that. By the looks of it, it must be election season. But who are all these people? I don't know who any of the candidates are. I had no idea, no. I've seen the names, I've seen the flyers, but I've not really paid too much attention to it. And it's all part of a larger issue. The city of Logan says it's seen relatively low voter turnout in municipal elections, with 24% last mayoral election in 2013 and 14% the election before that. Compare those numbers to the 85% turnout of Cache County as a whole for the last few years presidential election and 75% in 2012. But the city says they've taken steps to try to change those numbers. We've done a lot more social media. We've put out consistent uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, on our website just reminding people. But the most important thing the city says they're doing is right in here with these mail-in ballots. The city says they've been sending these out now for two years and that they've already seen a higher voter turnout because of it. Typically we do have a low voter turnout, but going to vote by mail has changed that. It's definitely increased our voter turnout because the ballot comes right to the person's home. And while they may be running against each other this year, 
Both candidates for mayor say that voting in municipal elections can be far more important than general elections. Here are the things that directly affect each student as you come here. Um, housing, your utility bills, where you park, um, what you walk to school on. I think there is a lot of importance in municipal elections and uh, you know basically this is local local politics but it's also where the services are provided. And Tuesday is the deadline for all mail-in ballots and City Hall will host, host a voter turnout or assistance center that day as well to help with any voting issues you may have. Speaking of voting, do you like Utah's caucus system or think we need a primary? Count My Vote is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization that says they're dedicated to increasing voter participation in Utah elections. This was their first of eight meetings held around Utah last weekend where they wanted to talk to voters about an initiative they have in place to change Utah's primary process. Voters met in the library to hear a presentation and voice their opinions on the initiative because it is not yet finalized and can still be changed. They say they want the opportunity to talk to Utah voters. We're excited to get out throughout the state and talk to voters and hear from voters about the primary process. For more information about Count My Vote, check out our Facebook page. When we come back, what would you do if President Trump was tweeting about you? We'll show you what one man did. And are bullet bikes dangerous or just for fun? We want your opinion right after this. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Would you trust a high school student to learn on their own without a teacher? Aaron Cox joins us live here at USU to tell us more about Logan High School's new program. Aaron, Thanks, Sarah. Do you remember your old high school classroom? Students taking notes, teachers lecturing. Well, not all classrooms at Logan High School are like that anymore. They showed me their new innovations program. This is not your ordinary class. You just show it to the camera and you're scanned in. Or way to take attendance and she is not your ordinary teacher. Each student has a mentor. The difference is that I'm not centered on my curriculum, I'm centered on student learning now. No lecture necessary because the curriculum is all online. Mentors check in daily with their students to see how they're moving along. Making sure that they're taking the right classes, they're on the right path, they're going at the right pace. Shifting from a whole class teaching model to small group and one-on-one -on -one instruction. One-on-one -on -one access during school hours and 24-hour access to the online curriculum. We've set up a system where they can really take ownership and move at their own pace. I finished the entire math year in one term. I really like it is uh, Talking with these students, I learned the new program doesn't just help students succeed or even get ahead. In class. But for some... With innovations, I was able to fix those classes that I messed up and go back and change my grades. It's a new beginning. I had a second chance to take another class and do it online, which is a format that works a lot better for me personally. And and I'm still having a kind of hard time learning to get self-motivated, but that's a whole part of the process. You have to tailor it for every single student. We, at times, provide more structure if students need it, or as we find that they need more structure. This helps every student achieve and every student learn. So you're leaving high school with the things that you should have left high school with, and not just a degree. So far, Logan has 400 students enrolled in this new program. They say they hope it will expand. Reporting live, Aaron Cox, ATV News. Back to you, Sarah. So, Aaron, do the students just have free reign on their whole schedule then? 
They have a pretty loose schedule. They can bounce back and forth between regular classes, advanced placement classes, and what they now call innovations. Thanks, Aaron. So how would you feel if you tweeted President Trump and he responded? McKay Copens, reporter for The Atlantic, visited campus last week and shared his tweeting conversations and his experience having an accidental two-day vacation with President Trump. Copens says before the presidential election, he wrote an article expressing doubt towards Trump's political ambitions. Trump's response? He started with Twitter, uh, calling me an array of interesting names. Um, he called me a scumbag, a slime bag, true garbage with no credibility. Um, those are all quotes that I used on the Amazon page for my book, by the way. <laughs> Copens laughed, saying he survived the Twitter attacks and says it was kind of funny. The winding roads down Cache Valley Canyons can be a lot of fun to drive, and a few locals are taking those twists and turns to the extreme. Zero to 60 in three seconds and a maximum speed of about 170 miles per hour, these bullet bikes can fly and corner. Bullet bikers say local canyons have become a popular spot to test themselves and their machines, but some people say it's dangerous. This rider, who prefers to remain anonymous, says it's worth it. If I crash on a motorcycle, he's had a smile on my face. It's a risk you have to take to enjoy the sport that I love to do. And if you frequent Logan Canyon, that can be really scary. I can't even imagine seeing like some crazy f bike flying on by, but tell us what you think. Are the Canyon bullet bikers just having fun, acting foolish, or endangering others? We have posted this poll on our Facebook page. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's a pumpkin. Oh, 8 teams of engineers met at Oak Ridge Park in North Logan on Saturday to put their pumpkin catapults to the test. Each team launches their pumpkins to test the accuracy of their catapult and how far they can get a pumpkin to fly. While some catapults are successful, others may fall short. However, perhaps the biggest challenge the catapults face is launching enough candy-filled pumpkins for the number of kids at the event. The main reason we do that is because it brings so many families and the families love it and we're happy to have the support of the community around the university. All of the pumpkins used for the pumpkin toss came from the North Logan Pumpkin Walk. And what a great way to celebrate Halloween. And it, you know, it's a good time to get the kids out and just see some, some crazy stuff. Exactly. And when we come back, ATV's Bo Lamb will have your full Cache Valley weather report. Our current temperature here in Logan is 61 degrees. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Students in biological engineering at Utah State University have the unique chance through the Synthetic Biomanufacturing Institute to engineer uses for spider silk. Projects developed in the lab include medical coatings, strong adhesives, and elastic woven fibers. These Aggies from Utah State are influencing and changing the face of biological engineering. Join them and leave your mark as well. Sorry, I've got big ideas. As a college student, you have big ideas to make a big difference on campus. Why not get funding for those ideas in a big way? The Blue Goes Green Grant provides funding for student sustainability projects. These projects help USU students be more environmentally responsible, live healthier, and save money. To find out more, go to usu.edu slash bgg. Get funding for your Blue Goes Green idea in a big way. Blue Goes Green. Make a difference.
Welcome back. Bo Lamb joins us here in the studio to let us know what's up with the weather. And I hear there's some snow coming for us. Yeah, we need to enjoy our last few days of fall because it's going to be short-lived. I'll show you what I mean. So here on the national radar, as you can see right now, not looking too bad. Uh, Utah, we're clear. Colorado, we're clear. But up north in Idaho, Washington, and Wyoming, it's a different story. Up north, there's a little bit of snow mixed with rain already in the year. Spokane, Billings, and Missoula have seen snow in the early morning hours. Um, I will sh show you our state radar. Right now, what we have on the Wasatch Front is a little bit of scattered rain showers on the Wasatch Front. The clouds are hitting the mountains and raining on Salt Lake, Layton, Ogden, and Brigham City, and that's about it. It's not extending into other parts of the state. And up in Logan, we may see some scattered showers later today. As for our seven-day forecast, as you can see here, uh, it's mostly sunny today. Uh, tonight, 17 mile per hour winds, and that will continue through the week at the later hours. Uh, Thursday, 30% chance of rain. Friday, 40% chance. And, down, and on Sunday, we actually have a chance of snow when it dips below freezing in the later hours. And that snow chance will continue Monday before it clears up on Tuesday. But uh, as you can see, 29 degree, low of 29 on Sunday, low of 25 on Monday, and Tuesday, low of 29. And so we may need to pack our heavy jackets later this week. Thanks, Bo. Well, speaking of the snow, I've actually never seen snow fall, so I'm never a little seen nervous. Snow? Never, well, ever. Well, we're all here to welcome you to Logan. And when we come back, USU Volleyball faced off against UNLV and New Mexico. We'll show you who won. And the first game of Cache Valley's high school football finals started Friday. We'll tell you which teams are still in. I'm one on Monkey Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning... 1 in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. Check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. I'm Brian Petty and this is ATV Sports. Utah State hosted the Mountain West Conference undefeated Boise State Broncos on Saturday night. Merlin Olsen Field was full of fans ready for the big showdown between Boise and Utah. This short run by Lawan Hunt would take three Boise State defenders to bring him down. Utah State quarterback Jordan Love throws this touchdown pass to Ronquavian Tarver under pressure, resulting in the Aggies' first score of the game. Kent Myers throws this bullet to Dax Raymond, dodging a defender, 
and picking up a first down and then some. Boise State's Brett Rippon sacked by Deontay Fortenberry for a loss of more than five yards. Jordan Love makes this 40-yard pass to Jordan Nathan, making 168 passing yards for Love this game. Luan Hunt rushed for 31 yards, including this touchdown stretch into the end zone, but that wouldn't be enough to hold off the Broncos with a final score of 41-14 to Boise State. Really both, both phases, offense, defense, um, we, we never could get anything going, and uh, that falls squarely on me. The next game for the Aggies is on the road against New Mexico. Utah State's volleyball team had their first game of the week on Thursday playing at home against New Mexico. The Aggies looking for an end to their losing streak against the Lobos at home. Starting off with this score by senior hitter Lauren Anderson. Followed by this ball pelted past the Lobos defense by freshman Gabby Shumway. And this block at the net to give USU some much needed momentum. Cassidy Johnson assists leading blocker Bailey Downing for this spike to score and Gabby Shumway at the net again with another score on the board. But even with the scores in defense, New Mexico would go on to win the match 3-0. Even with the loss against New Mexico, USU had a comeback against UNLV on Saturday. The fans dancing in the bleachers were even joined by some of the team. Bailey Downing starting off early with this little love tap and no rebound from the defense and this outside spike from senior Rachel Gail Hammond to boost the score early. And a great block at the net by junior Cassidy Johnson paired up with Bailey Downing. UNLV tried to match block for block and shot for shot, but even that wouldn't be enough as the Aggies go on to win with a final score of 3-0. to zero. Our goal was to get kills and I felt like our hitters did a great job on um, reaching for that goal. They did awesome. USU is finally able to end the four-game losing streak. Keep it up, Aggies. Looking to extend their two-game winning streak, USU women's soccer battled Boise State at home. Midfielder Emma Clark with this kick barely misses the goal, hitting the post on the right side. Freshman Ashley Cardozo makes this first and only goal of the game for the Aggies, but Boise State scores less than a minute later in the first half. Senior forward Wesley Hamblin takes this shot that is blocked by Boise State's goalie. And another shot here by Cardozo narrowly misses the goal again, and this second shot by Boise State would be the last of the game, with a final score of 2-1 to one, Boise State. Even though the Aggies lost, this week Ashley Cardozo was named first team all-conference because of her performance. Well done. The hopes and dreams of three Cache Valley High School football teams hung in the balance this weekend, starting with the Skyview and Mountain View game. The Mountain View Bruins would have a struggle to keep up with the undefeated Skyview Bobcats. Junior Tony Hansen runs this ball up the middle for a nice game for Skyview. And senior quarterback Jackson Sidaway makes this throw to Mason Falslov to pick up the first down. Mountain View responds with this pass from freshman quarterback Aaron Hyatt with the receiver getting knocked out of bounds. And this run under pressure, getting the ball down just outside of the goal line. But that wouldn't be enough to hold off the Bobcats from winning 50-14. to 14. The next game on the list for the night was the Salem Hill Skyhawks against the Mountain Crest Mustangs. Mountain Crest quarterback Brady Hall starts off with this run with some help from behind. And this 40-yard pass downfield to senior receiver Kyler Olsen, just barely missing the goal line. The Skyhawks respond with this run up the middle by senior wide receiver Mac Latimer, who wouldn't be brought down until the 25-yard line. But Mountain Crest running back Jace Dart came back with this huge kickoff return, bringing the ball way back and helping seal their victory over Salem Hills with a score of 44-34. to The last Cache Valley High School game was Spanish Fork at Ridgeline, with Ridgeline winning with a score of 25-22. to and yeah, there was a lot of action going on. And even though there were some, you know, some mess ups, there were some really good things to focus on. I mean, we've got a number one and number two team in this valley in the playoffs. Yep, it's true. And on top of that, Ashley Cardozo with um, all conference. That's crazy impressive. Yeah, that was amazing. That was really cool. Yeah. When we come back, Zuta held its biggest fundraiser of the year last weekend. We'll show you what it was. And USU softball had cows and Beyonce at practice. We'll show you about their wild game right after this. Quiet, please. Wait a sec. I'll take one. Oh, yeah. All right. All good. Take care. Way to go. Nice. Bring it on. Gotcha. 
I'm here for you. Oh no. Please, please, please. I'm waiting. Interesting. Not buying it. Not fair. That's it. This conversation is over. Oh, brother. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. I'm having a stroke. I'm having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F. Face grouping. A. Arm weakness. S. Speech difficulty. T. Time. Time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. Thanks for sticking around. Coming off its highest win total since 1993, the USU softball team ended its fall scrimmage this weekend. ATV's Braden Clark joins us from the Lee and LeGrand Johnson Field to show us how this team is looking this offseason. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, the team has looked pretty good out there. Well, as good as one can look while wearing clown shoes. Per USU tradition, the softball team finishes their fall season with a Halloween scrimmage. <laughs> Wild Thing vs. A Cow, a clown takes on the white chicks, and finally, a sumo wrestling umpire. A bad dream? No, it's just the USU softball scrimmage last weekend. It seemed fairly even up until Chick-fil-A sent this one soaring over the fence. Well, this is kind of our year-end scrimmage. We've always been able to weather-wise end our fall season right around this time and uh, started this up a few years ago. No, we just like to, to thank the uh, community for coming out. Had a great crowd today and, and a lot of kids in costume. And so, you know, we just, just have fun with it. That's what this is all about. Some players say they enjoy this final scrimmage because it helps them relax and focus on the upcoming year. We're going to have a really good season. So we're just really excited about that. And we've had a good fall preparing for spring. So we're excited to get it started. The softball team opens spring season February 9th against Pittsburgh. Braden Clark, ATV News. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Braden. Zuta at Willow Park brought animals and children together in the spirit of Halloween. <laughs> this crane and other animals at the zoo were joined by children this weekend, all dressed up for Halloween Friday and Saturday. Over 3,000 people lined up at the t to attend the annual fundraising event for Zuta, Boo at the Zoo. Families came dressed in their Halloween costumes, played games, and enjoyed the animals. The zoo offers unicorn rides and gave the children a chance to interact with and pet some of the animals. The zoo director says events like these are key to the zoo's budget. Activities such as Boo at the Zoo really are an additional infusion into our, our budget, annual budget, that really help us a lot. And, and we need to have those in order to continue to, to operate and to have, uh, provide these type of services to the community. To see upcoming events at the zoo, or if you'd like to volunteer, go to our Facebook page for more. And I don't know about you, Taylor, but I woke up a little sluggish with it being Halloween just last night. And I'm probably with some of you that are up before the sun. And okay, so it probably wasn't just you and me because fans of a certain classic film had a late night last night as well. On Halloween, the newly reopened Utah Theater hosted a coven of dancing witches and an audience of passionate Rocky Horror Picture Show fans. The dressed up crowd sang and danced along with the movie. Kevin Nakatani hosted the show as the character Frankenfurter. He says the screening was a huge success. In the newly renovated theater, it's a totally different experience, and I think people are excited about that. So I think this is the greatest turnout in Logan that we've had for this event. And we were talking off the set, and apparently at Rocky Horror Shows, at some points in the show, fans actually throw food at the screen. Yeah, they really, they get you involved down there at that show. It's really fun. Well, thank you for joining us on this edition of ATV News. For all of our editions of ATV News, check out our Facebook page. And we'll leave you with some final looks at Logan's windy fall weather. Have a great day, Aggies. <laughs>